This stack quest is sponsored by Jad Bio. Just add data, and their automatic machine learning algorithms will do the rest of the work for you. For more details, follow the link in the pinned comment below. Auto ML is fascinating. Let's learn about it right now. We've got a special guest. We're going to talk to him. Hooray, StackQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to StackQuest. Today, we're talking to Giannis, a professor at the University of Crete and the CEO of Gnosis Data Analysis, whose product is JAD Bio, Just Add Data Bio, a product that specializes in auto ML. So, hello, Giannis. Glad to be here. All right, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm really excited about this interview, and I guess we're just going to dive right in with some questions. What is auto ML? Well, auto ML stands for automated machine learning. And it is the effort to fully automate end-to-end -end the machine learning process. Now, what this means in practice is that we try to build systems where you just throw your data in, you click a button, and get results. As we say, you declare what you want, and the system knows how to compute it. Now, that, of course, like, uh, sounds extremely ambitious. So the term AutoML should be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, we gradually try to automate bigger and bigger portions of uh, machine learning. But as of now, there are absolutely no systems that can fully automate all types of machine learning, from predictive modeling with, uh, let's say, sequences, to learning with graphs, to causal discovery. Uh, for example, our system, uh, as you mentioned, it's called uh, JADBio, fully automates predictive modeling with tabular data, but not unsupervised learning. Now, some people confuse AutoML with what is called uh, technically cache, standing for combined algorithm selection and hyperparameter optimization. Mm. Cache are algorithms for optimizing the combination of algorithms to uh, use at each step of the analysis, uh, like uh, transformations, imputation of missing values, feature selection, modeling, and the like, uh, and their hyperparameters. But in the end, they just return a predictive model. The most famous example of a cache library is the very successful, admittedly, uh, auto scikit learn system, but it only returns a predictive model. Mm. However, to me, AutoML should be much, much more. It should not just return a model. This is not uh, all a user needs. AutoML should return estimates of uh, what uh, predictive performance to expect from the model. Uh, it should perform feature selection, uh, help interpreting and explaining the final model, help the user like make decisions, uh, put the model into operational environment, monitor its execution, raise alarm if predictions starting to go off, and uh, much more. It should provide everything a good analyst would provide to you where uh, he or she uh, to analyze your data. That's what AutoML means to me. So I guess the question is, uh, if AutoML does everything, who is it for? Is it for academics or industry people? Or is it for people that are already experts? Or is it just for beginners who are trying to learn machine learning? Or who is it for? Right. I, I think the beauty of AutoML is that it should be for anyone. And I mean anyone, not just like uh, computer coders. From CEOs who analyze their company data to uh, a home dad who wants to analyze their expenses Excel sheet. Oh, wow. AutoML should not require any coding, math, statistics, or machine learning. Yeah. Uh, AutoML should be democratic and bring machine learning to the masses. My vision is to build AutoML systems that follow the path of Excel. Here's what I mean. Uh, initially, Excel seemed to appeal only to accountants. Now, everybody uses it, from a teacher who stole student grades to a high-level executive. Now, uh, it may seem at first that AutoML is meant for novices and non-experts, but this is absolutely not true. It really boosts the productivity of expert analysts, too. We have seen this with uh, numerous clients of ours, uh, and in fact, some of the people who best appreciate AutoML are experts who are fully aware of the difficulties and challenges of doing it yourself and can feel the pain and effort that AutoML takes away. Uh, programmers used to program in assembly language decades ago. Now they program in Python, which is much more automatic. 
programmers, uh, programmers benefited from automated uh, uh, programming languages and uh, making programming languages higher level. So uh, I think it's the same thing with AutoML. Instead of scripting all the details of an analysis, uh, experts can now automate many parts of it and they can focus on other aspects of uh, the analysis like uh, data representation and results in presentation, uh, interpretation. If you're new to AutoML, what are the first things mm -hmm. I need to know? Absolutely. This is, this is very important uh, uh, to know um, that you need, users need to be aware of certain things, uh, and namely correctness of performance estimation. So let me explain what I mean. Uh, when trying lots of analysis pipelines, as AutoML uh, does automatically, uh, meaning you try lots of different combinations of algorithms for each step of the analysis with different hyperparameter values and the like, a statistical phenomenon occurs. The technical uh, term for this phenomenon is uh, multiple comparisons problem in induction algorithms. Okay, mm. it's not the best one. Uh, it's also related to what is called the winner's curse in, statistic, uh, in statistics. And it basically goes like this. Say you try 1,000 analysis pipelines that lead to 1,000 models, and the best one has cross-validated accuracy of, say, 90%. And even though this is cross-validated, because you have chosen it among 1,000 models, it is an overestimation on mm. average. Mm -hmm. So when you cross-validate one algorithm, you get the right performance estimate. When you cross-validate 1,000 algorithms or pipelines, and then you choose the best, you overestimate performances. And for small sample sizes, this or imbalanced uh, data, very imbalanced data, this overestimation is simply unacceptable. It's not negligible. And we show this in several scientific papers we have published. Now, you could leave a holdout set to estimate the final performance, but then uh, you lose these samples to estimation. You don't, not, uh, don't learn from uh, mm -hmm. these samples. Yeah. Um, and so if you don't have that many samples, this is also unacceptable. Yeah. So you yeah. need some statistical procedures to remove the optimism uh, from your estimations. Just like in statistics where we have a multiple testing problem, uh, you have a multiple exactly right. model fitting problem. Right. Um, yeah, so exactly. Exactly. This, this is the, the right analogy is the conceptual equivalent of uh, multiple statistical, yeah. uh, multiple hypothesis testing and statistics. Um, and and it sounds like you guys have at least, at least Jad Bio has a way mm -hmm. of compensating for this effect, sort of like the bone Ferroni correction or false exactly discovery right. rate. You guys have a way yes. of adjusting for that, which just sounds fantastic. Yes. Um, how does auto ML compare to manually optimizing a bunch of models? Is it better to do it by hand or is it, or is it, is it better to right. use auto ML? Right. That, 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 that's a good question. And, and a lot of people are actually asking this uh, and, and we hear about it. I mean, they, a lot of people are thinking like, okay, sure, you can automate analysis, but I, can, I bet I can do a better job. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, yeah. the, uh, that's the attitude uh, we encounter a lot of times, uh, which is understandable, of course. Now, it's difficult to prove or disprove like scientifically uh, this statement, I mean, does AutoML like, uh, do a better job than human experts? Because which human expert do you actually compare against? Uh, so it would take very big studies with lots of experts uh, with different levels of expertise to get sound results. And then once you do that, AutoML will have uh, uh, improved uh, since they're improving constantly and any such study will be obsolete. So, uh, you know, without, without like scientific evidence, I can at least tell you my experience. One like uh, story I have for you is we recently participated in a, an FDA prediction challenge to predict the survival time of uh, brain cancer, uh, brain cancer uh, patients. So we downloaded the data, uploaded them to JADBio, clicked, and got results with, uh, within a few minutes of uh, manual effort at least. And we got third place out of 30 participating groups. Now, the winner submitted a model that had just uh, one uh, point of C index uh, higher than ours on the holdout set. Oh, wow. uh, just to recall, uh, remind, like, uh, uh, recall what the C index is, is it's similar to the AUC metric for measuring performance for survival analysis tasks. So the, the difference was uh, not that, that big, and it was within the confidence intervals, within the uncertainty of the estimation. So it, it may have just been uh, lack. Uh, now, 
I don't know how long the winning team spent on the challenge, but I bet it was measured in the hundreds of hours instead of like uh, uh, minutes as, as we did of <laughs> yeah. manual effort. Yeah. Um, so uh, another major difference with the winner of that challenge is that Jadbio estimated the C index that we would expect from the training set to a test set uh, to within like uh, almost like um, uh, one decimal point, let's say. Mm. Now, instead, the winning team estimated their performance to be 100%, mm. 100%. And they actually got 74% uh, of C index or 0.74. So this is very misleading to the user. They uh, overestimated their ability to uh, make predictions. Now, having said that, many analysis problems do require an expert to pre-process the data, clean the data, mm represent them in a suitable format, formulate the problem as a machine learning task, uh, and make it ready for AutoML. So that's where the human is still unbeatable. Uh, but once the data is ready, beware of the AutoML. Will AutoML replace data science jobs or just make those jobs more interesting? What do you think? <laughs> well, when, when something like this did ever happen before? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, never. Uh, you go from assembly language, to use my example before, to mm -hmm. Python. And instead of firing programmers, now global economy needs more and more programmers. Yeah. Uh, so true. right now, uh, only about 5% uh, of the global data is actually ever analyzed. Mm. And what I think is going to happen is that the demand for analysis will increase with AutoML because people, businesses, scientists will be able to unlock the value of the data that they're sitting on and they will be hungry for more. Uh, so AutoML will boost productivity, but at least for the foreseeable future, it will not eliminate the need for an expert. Uh, yeah. You will still need the expert to represent and formulate the problem as machine learning, interpret the results, uh, apply the model correctly, and, and this type of stuff. Now, the difference, however, is that the experts will have to be more specialized, more uh, educated, sophisticated than before. Uh, right now, people perform uh, cross-validation of a random forest in Python, and they feel entitled to write data scientists in the resume. <laughs> so, <true>. uh, <laughs> these simple tasks, I think, will be automated and performed with much higher quality, uh, no errors, no overfitting by AutoML. So, the next generation of data scientists will have to add more value than that to the whole mm. process to justify their salaries. What do you think is the future uh, for AutoML? Well, a, a very, very bright one, uh, I think. Uh, I believe that the era of manual scripting for machine learning is reaching a critical point. It is changing. It is evolving. Um, I predict that within five years at the most, most data analysis will be completely performed by AutoML systems, or at the very least, there will be an automated system like an AutoML system uh, uh, as a major part of the analysis. Uh, now, experts may still be scripting, but the scripts will be calling AutoML systems and configuring AutoML systems and customizing them instead of uh, being from scratch. So mm -hmm. it will be scripting on a higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are great opportunities uh, business-wise for startups like ours and investments in the space. And I think we'll see AutoML systems with different uh, specializations like John Bio now is a quite general tool for everybody, but caters more to bioinformatics data as an example. Uh, and initially, I think there will be many, many AutoML systems, but eventually they will gradually consolidate to a few survivors. And uh, I think, um, uh, I also believe lots of different types of companies will need to have an AutoML um, uh, internally embedded in their products in order to survive. Mm. For example, uh, database vendors, data ranking companies, da cloud providers, and so forth, will need to own an AutoML system uh, to convert automatically the data uh, stored by their users to actionable knowledge. Uh, I also believe we'll see AutoML systems embedded within other software too, and we may not even know it. Hmm. For example, uh, we, we will have like AutoML within laptops, cars, and other devices to keep analyzing the data from our behavior and our usage of these devices um, and our interaction with the environment uh, of these systems to make them smarter. So hmm. uh, that's, 
I think, about the future of AutoML. Well, it sounds very bright. And uh, once again, Giannis, I want to thank you for participating in this conversation with me. I learned a lot about AutoML that I did not know before. Uh, really, so it's, it's my pleasure. I, I really appreciate it. And um, so thank you very much. And until next time, quest on.